Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm feeling pretty casual. I'm literally in just basically my pajamas right now. My hair isn't really done, but I feel like honestly it kind of fits the vibe of this video because I was thinking, I was going through my makeup collection and I saw one product, specifically this M Cosmetics Cushion Foundation. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, like I need to revisit that. I need to use that again. I think I only used it once. And then I thought to myself, I wonder how many other products there are that I really want to use again that I think I only used once. Guys, I have a full face of those types of products. I'm not really sure if every single item was only used once, um, but regardless, I don't really remember my thoughts on them and it wasn't necessarily because they were bad that I didn't use them. Just with my job, like this is what I do every day. I review makeup, there's always constant new products coming to review, so sometimes if it doesn't stay on my desk, I forget to use it again and it's nothing against the product, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a full face of things that I think I only used one time. So we can kind of see if there's anything that should be in my routine that like deserves to be my routine that just hasn't had the right moment, you know what I mean? So we're just gonna get right into it. I came across this. I know for a fact I only used this once, you guys. This is the Pat McGrath Primer. A while back I tried out the entire Pat McGrath complexion line and I liked it, but because of how expensive it was, I feel like I just naturally kind of didn't use it again. I don't remember anything about this primer. So I'm just gonna apply this all over. I'm noticing immediately, I guess, that it's like a blurring type primer. I didn't remember this at all, but it feels kind of silicone-y, which thinking about it now, I'm not sure how well this will mesh with a cushion foundation, but we're gonna try to make it look really nice. So I'm just blending this out all over the skin. I need to figure out like a better routine to make sure that this doesn't happen as frequently as it does. Cause it's almost like a problem how many products I try that, you know, just kind of end up in my drawers. And again, not for like any specific reason. I just don't get around to using them again for videos. And so anyway, I'm actually really excited to dip into the product that sparked the entire idea of this video. Again, this is the M Cosmetics Daydream Cushion SPF Foundation. This one specifically is the shade Fair. I've been obsessed, obsessed is an understatement, with the M Cosmetics new cushion highlighters. And that's actually what made me think, wait, I need to go back and try the uh, cushion foundation again. So here we are. This time I'm gonna use the cushion because every time I use a cushion foundation with a brush or a sponge, I always get comments like, no, you've got to use the cushion. That's like the point of it. That's the best part. So I'm gonna attempt to do that. I just feel like it takes a little longer Maybe I have like a big face, I don't know, but it like takes a minute to press and blend the entire face with this. But just for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to really press this in. The sound is kind of satisfying, huh? A little cushion ASMR for ya. I think it looks so fresh on the skin. It gives a really nice amount of coverage, but it's not over the top. The thing I like about cushion foundations too is usually it comes with a refill, and I think this one did, if I remember right. Honestly, I think I'm just too impatient. Like I get why people use these sponges with cushion foundations. I think it looks really nice, but I don't know if I could apply it entirely with this. I think in a perfect world, I would probably still apply this with a sponge or a brush and then go over it with this to just press it in. Cause I feel like some areas like around the nose and stuff, it's kind of hard to really blend that in which look at me, I'm still going in with a sponge afterwards. I just, honestly, this is faster for me. I don't know, I tried you guys. I tried to do the whole full face with the cushion applicator that comes with it, but I truly feel like a sponge and a brush is just faster for me. I forgot how nice that looks on the skin. It's very, very natural. Exactly what you would expect from a cushion foundation as far as the coverage goes, it looks bouncy on the skin in my opinion like it makes my skin look really fresh and alive and awake which I love um, it also has sunscreen in it and good skincare benefits so this is kind of a product that I feel like is geared more toward every day in my opinion like I don't know if I would reach for this for super glam occasions but for the vibe and the look that I'm going for today I think it's perfect I'm really excited to be wearing this again okay for concealer the age perfect concealer from L'Oreal I vaguely remember feeling like there was better at the drugstore, um, but I haven't used this since I tried it. I don't, I don't remember though. Maybe I liked it. I'm gonna take the shade 200 Ivory, and this is what we're gonna use underneath the eyes. I did an entire video on this collection actually, and I remember there being some really good things. So I'm just gonna put that underneath the eyes, and I did apply some over blemishes as well. So I'm just gonna blend out the blemishes first, and then I'm just gonna take my sponge and press this out. 
This is pretty, it's very luminous, which I love. See, maybe there wasn't a reason why I never reached for it again. Maybe I need to create like a series or something where I can like have an excuse to revisit some of these products. I know I usually do, like I usually create videos here and there reusing things that I'm into, but you know what would be cool is if I could also kind of get feedback from you guys because if there's a review that I do and like you go out and buy the product, I would love to know what products you wanna see me use again. Cause sometimes it's hard to know what's sticking in your routine based off of my own recommendations. So that'd be kind of nice to figure out a way to kind of communicate to each other. If you guys have picked up something that I've tried and you would like to see me use it again. Cause the last thing I wanna do is create reviews about good products and then just move on to new products so frequently that, you know, I don't use the things that maybe you were excited about and picked up because of a review of mine, you know? That concealer looks so pretty. Wow, I love the luminosity that it gives and almost has like a tacky finish to it too, in a good way. Like it feels like it's not gonna go anywhere. Hmm, maybe I've been just like sleeping on that for no reason. I like these videos too, cause I feel like it gives me a chance to rediscover things I already have, you know? Which brings me to my next thing, the Tower 28 Bronzino West Coast Bronzer. It's been so long since I've used this, you guys. And again, for no particular reason, I remember really liking it. I'm gonna take this on a brush first. I thought this would be so pretty alongside of the cushion foundation. It's just kind of like a luminous bronzer, super summery, super fresh. So I'm just gonna begin by kind of stamping this into the skin. I'm gonna go along the jawline too, but this truly does give a gorgeous, luminous, sun-kissed look, which I don't know why, you guys. I have so much texture like right here right now. So honestly, this might not be the most ideal product for a situation like mine, but it's not stopping me. I still want to use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of press that across the nose too. So fun and summery. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in with my sponge and just go over the edges. I want to make sure that this is super blended into the skin. I am kind of tapping over top of it as well, but I'm mostly focusing the pressure around the edges to make sure that it's blended nicely. Make sure to kind of blend in the nose a little. I'm trying to decide like the rest of the vibe of the makeup because normally for me to make my makeup last, I have to set the entire thing, but I'm really into kind of this summery, dewy, borderline sweaty. We don't want to look greasy though, but do you know what I mean? Like just super dewy, wet skin look. I kind of want to keep that a little bit. I'm not doing a wear test today, so honestly, I personally don't care if it doesn't wear super well. And on me, you guys, like I have to set the whole face. Otherwise it just doesn't wear the way I need it to for a long period of time, most products anyway. Um, I found this, you guys, the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Powder. I remember liking how this looks on the skin, but I remember not liking how it gave me flashback, but I wanted to try it out again. Oh my, it smells like very perfumey. I'm taking the sponge and just patting out any creases under the eyes. And now I'm going to take my powder brush and just press this underneath the eyes. And then I'm going to take my sponge right after and press that back down. It's actually a really pretty formula, a really lightweight kind of a powder. And the funny thing is not that long ago, I didn't really like formulas like this. I didn't like the super thin powders that kind of make you choke when you <laughs> apply it because they're so extremely finely milled. But it's so interesting how tastes change, you know? Like, I really do enjoy how this looks now. I think that looks pretty. I'm just taking what's left and going across the nose a little bit and on the chin. I'm gonna take a little bit more, and go right in the middle of the forehead and through the brows a bit as well. Well, now I think I've gotten a little carried away with the powder. I feel like we don't really have that super glossy skin look, but hey, maybe if I take my sponge again and really spend some time here, maybe some of that will come back a little more. That's the hope anyway. Okay, I feel like that definitely refreshed it quite a bit. I think that actually looks nice. It's just so interesting to me how my tastes have definitely changed. I would definitely be careful if I was wearing this powder again to make sure I wasn't gonna be in flash photography, but to be quite honest, I don't remember the last time I was in a flash photo. It's been a long time, so I'm not too worried about it these days. In addition to the Bronzino Cream Bronzer, I did want to maybe revisit this Buxom Bronzer, which I swear, you guys, I only use like once, maybe twice, maybe. They launched two shades of this. I can't tell which one's lighter. This one, I don't know if they're necessarily lighter or deeper as much as, well, no, this one is deeper. It's more olive -y. I think I'm gonna go with this. It's a little more of a red. 
but I want to try it again. This is called Rooftop Tan. I'm just going to take my big fluffy brush and swirl this in the pan. And I'm just going to kind of emphasize the areas of the face that I want that super sun-kissed look. Oh yeah, whoa. Here we go. I don't always reach for a reddish toned bronzer on me just because I feel like it can really end up looking like too much on my fair skin. If I had even a fake tan on, I think it would look a little better than it is right now. Yeah, I feel like maybe I just didn't use this because it looks a little deep on me. I'm gonna take a fluffier powder brush and I'm actually gonna dip back into that um, Revlon powder. So I actually feel like I need a little powder to blend this out and kind of shear it out a little bit for me. <laughs> so much for not powdering the whole face, right? But this was an unexpected turn. So I just had to do what I had to do, you know? Yeah, it definitely has that rosy undertone, which honestly looks pretty natural if you're going for almost a sun-kissed, sun-burnt vibe. Like honestly, when you get a little sun-kissed, it does have that pinkish undertone, especially on me. I always am very, very pink after going out in the sun. Um, but yeah, for me with just my super fair skin, it's kind of hard to work with this type of an undertone without it looking too crazy. I actually think it looks good. Like it looks healthy, but I have a lot of red in my skin anyway, so it's easy to go overboard with this type of a thing for me. Alrighty, we're gonna move on to brows, which I picked up the Morphe Micro Brow Pencil. I've only used this a handful of times. This was actually something that I bought because of you guys, and I remember really liking it. This is another product where it's like, there's not really a reason why I stopped, other than it just went back in my drawers and I almost forgot about it, you know? So I'm just gonna fill in the brows with this. I do feel like the undertone could be better for me on this. Like it's a little bit too warm tone for my liking, but hey, we've got a reddish bronzer going on. Might as well match it with a little warm tone brow. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tap out the concealer that settled into my eye creases. I'm gonna take a tiny bit more of that Revlon powder onto the lids to set. You know what I wanted to revisit was the ColourPop Off Melrose palette. I've only used this once, I'm pretty sure maybe twice. And I told you guys I would like revisit it and get back to you and it's just one of those situations again where I just haven't had the chance to. So I'm gonna dip into the shade Boutique, which is a nice kind of warm brown with some shimmer in it. And I'm gonna work this into the crease. I'm feeling like keeping it warm toned. That's the theme today. Might as well, while we're in summer, do something a little summery. So I'm just kind of blending that out toward the brow and also kind of feathering it into this area here as well. I'm gonna take the same shade and go underneath the eyes. I'm just gonna sweep away any fallout underneath the eyes since that one did have a little shimmer in it. I'm trying to figure out what I should do here. Should we do something kind of coppery? It's been a while since I've done that. I think I will. I'm gonna take this shade called Brunch. And I'm just gonna start pressing that all over the entire lid. Honestly, I probably should have done my eyes first, but oh well, I'm not going anywhere. It's just one of those chill days where I kind of felt like playing with makeup. Oh my, I've had a brush hair on me all this time. What in the world? Okay, once that's on, I'm just gonna take that same kind of fluffy brush and blend out the edges. I'm gonna try out the glitter in here. It's been a while since I've done glitter. This is called Social Club. Yeah, I definitely should have done my eyes first. Oh well, ooh. Long time no glitter, you guys. It's been a while for me since I've done any glitter on the eyes. <gasps> I forget how much I love a good sparkly eye. Well, that's fun and pretty. I'm just thinking to myself how my intention when going into this look was to do something summery and fresh and here we are like full glam already. Who cares though? That's half the fun about like playing with makeup, right? You just never know what it's gonna end up looking like. I'm gonna take this shade Easy Breezy, which is kind of a nice warm toned brown. I'm taking this on a small BK Beauty 204 brush and I'm just gonna run this across the entire lower lash line. I wanna kind of match that warmth that we have from the copper shade on the top lid, but I don't really want shimmer, I don't think, on the lower lash line today. So I'm just gonna kind of run that through the entire lower lash line. Okay, after that's applied to the eyes, I'm just taking my powder brush and sweeping away any fallout again. I also wanna take the end of that pencil brush, pencil brush, where did I get that from? This fluffy brush. And I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit more, kind of smoke it a little bit underneath. Ooh, there's a lot of glitter fallout now on my face. Shoulda known, I shoulda done my eyes first, oh well. All right, for mascara, I found this mascara and I think I have used this a couple of times but I don't remember how I feel. This is the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes and there's a volumizing side and a curl and lengthening side. So I'm gonna do the curl and length first and then layer up the voluming. I think 
that's how you're supposed to do it, if I remember right. So I'm just gonna put this one on first. Okay, so there's that one. Then I'm gonna dip into the volumizing and I'm gonna layer that right on top. That's actually pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and just do the curl and length on the lower lashes. I'm not gonna worry about layering it there. Which, speaking of Huda Beauty, I feel like there are so many new amazing launches that are happening right now. There's that new kind of sister brand they created called Glowish. And they just launched like a tinted moisturizer and this bronzer that looks amazing. I actually just got it in PR today and I'm dying to try it. There's so many good things right now I feel like that are launching. So you guys might have a pretty decent wave of new product reviews. I mean, if you haven't already, I might like push this video back depending on what other products come in the mail that I wanna review and kind of upload first. But right when I feel like there couldn't be anything that I would really want right now in the makeup world, cause I truly have so much makeup, Patrick Ta launches an eyeshadow palette, Huda Beauty comes out with new things. Like I should know by now that I'm just always gonna get excited at something in the makeup world. It's just my favorite thing ever, so. Okay, well, we're pretty glam on the eyes. That mascara actually added quite a bit of volume. I can't remember, you guys, if this smudges or flakes on me, which could have also been a reason why I maybe didn't reach for it again, but initially it looks really good. I wanted to dip into this, which actually almost doesn't count because I don't think I've ever tried this. This is the Vive Cherub Sunset Blush. I tried out the Pesca and I ended up using that one so often and I don't think I ever really used this. Maybe I layered it a tiny bit, but I wanted to try it on its own. So this is a nice little warm toned situation as well. I'm just gonna take the tiniest bit and start to apply this on the apples of the cheeks. These are very pigmented blushes. Oh, you know what else I recently bought? Lisa Eldridge's new um, spring summer collection. Well, I didn't buy everything. I just bought the shades that I felt like I would really enjoy, but she launched like highlighters and blushes and new lipstick colors, new lip gloss colors. Yeah, so I will definitely let you guys know when that comes in the mail. I think I, it was like a pre-order, so it might not be here for a while, but let me tell you, I'm excited. Well, that is a beautiful, bright, bright pink blush. I'm gonna take my powder brush and kind of stamp that into the skin a little bit. I'm gonna wipe off any foundation on the lips. And then I was going through lip liners and I wanted to kind of stick with my M Cosmetics theme and use one of their lip liners. So this is the Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liner. Now that I have my makeup done, I for sure wanna use this color called Bunny. I think I've used this several times, but it's just been a while. So I really wanted to revisit this. And I'm just gonna use this to line and fill in the lips. I love to take my finger with this formula and just blur it out even more. This formula is so nice, I love it. I need to use these more often. And then, you guys, the Fenty Cream, the Gloss Bomb Cream in Fenty Glow. I literally think I only used this one time. And it's crazy because I loved how they felt and how they looked on the lips. I think I need to leave this one on my desk so that I never ever forget about it again. Cause I think they're just so pretty, these Gloss Bomb Creams. Okay, we're gonna just step back and assess the situation. And I actually don't think I need any more bronzer. Shocker, friends. Just because of the tone and undertone, I really feel like I have enough warmth going on. I have so much glitter fallout on my eyes, you guys. Hmm, should have thought that through a little better, but I didn't. Oh, a setting spray. I didn't get a setting spray. Let me go find one that I haven't used in a while. I found one. I'm gonna use the Physician's Formula, the Essence of Healthy setting spray, which I think I've only used once as well, so it works out. I really drenched the face today with that. Once that's kind of drying down, I'm gonna take my sponge and just press everything in. And actually for highlighter now, I'm gonna use a product that I haven't used in so long, but I wanna kind of revisit it again. This is the Danessa Myricks Do It Highlighting Facial Balm. So it's basically just a balm. And I'm gonna take this on my finger and I'm gonna use this as my highlighter, just to kind of emphasize the high points of the face a bit. I'm just gonna keep it to the sides of the face. Sometimes I do like highlighter down the center, but with the balm, I don't feel like I want a balmy look in the center, if that makes sense. So then I'm gonna go ahead and, and set the brows with the Bare Mineral Strength and Length Serum Infused Brow Gel. I've used this maybe twice. It's pretty new to my collection actually, and I wanted to reuse it. So I'm gonna throw that in the brows. I actually really like the applicator on here. I feel like it combs through the brows nicely. I feel like I might've gone a little overboard with the product, in the brow, so I'm just taking the Morphe spoolie and kind of brushing that out a little bit. So there's not like visible chunks of brow gel anywhere. I'm gonna take what's left 
um, on the blush brush and just kind of tap that into the cheeks a little bit more. Even though it's going over top of the balm, I still want a little more color a little higher up. I probably should have done that before applying the balm, but oh well, here we are. Okay, I'm remembering one thing about the concealer that I didn't love, because the thing is it applies beautifully and has like a gorgeous radiance to it, but I think it creased pretty bad on me if I remember right. I think it really settled into the fine lines around my eyes, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, here's the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was kind of fun to revisit a lot of these products. The look turned out pretty good, considering it was just kind of a mishmash of things that I wanted to reuse. I feel like it ended up looking pretty summery. It still looks fresh. The eyes are definitely more glam than I was anticipating. Yeah, but overall, I feel like I like how everything turned out. It's interesting how the things I'm the most excited about are the things I was the most excited about going in. Like, I'm really excited to keep using this cushion foundation. I just feel like it looks so fresh on the skin. So excited about this cream gloss again. Really loved the blush, actually. The eyeshadow palette is pretty. I really feel like I have a lot of those colors already from ColourPop in a way, so to me, it's not like a need. It's not something that floors me, really. But it's pretty. I do really like it. So yeah, that was fun to kind of revisit everything. I definitely think the Buxom bronzer is a little too warm for me. Um, I really love the effect of this bronzino, so I'm gonna keep it on my desk. I think it's gonna be a great kind of go-to cream bronzer for summertime, so I'm gonna really do my best to try to go through a lot more of my makeup than I have been, clearly. There's some things that I've been missing out on that are so pretty that I just honestly kind of forgot about, so. I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely had a lot of fun sitting down and filming with these products. It's fun to revisit everything. It's fun to create something new with things that I already have. So yeah, if you're new here, hi, my name is Allie and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button and if you're already a subscriber, but you wanna be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. That's it for me today. I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.